<laughs> All right, we're with Trent Reznor talking about the Nine Inch Nails' latest album, The Fragile. So, Trent, I was reading Time magazine, came across an interesting um, quote that you had talked about. It said, um, I think that anything that is dangerous and exciting about rock music has moved over to rap or hip-hop. What happened to rock? Uh, it's suffering from a real case of the blands right now, I think. Um, I don't, to me, I mean, growing up, I wasn't allowed to listen to Kiss, so of course that was what I, you know, it represented something that was in, in, you couldn't get, or it was some subversive thing. And I think just, um, I mean, generally through the history of rock, it's been, what's been good about it is the rebelliousness and the um, anti-establishment and the rule-breaking and the um, lack of political correctness, perhaps. And I think people want excitement and danger. And if you look at what's, I mean, the rock bands out now, it's, I don't see much of that. It's, like, it's been sucked into the pop world. And I think when you see a DMX or a, on down the line, there's a, there's a aggression and there's a, um, something your parents wouldn't like about it that's, that's where most interesting stuff is happening now in terms of outrageousness to me, anyway. Do you find that, that you, like, because some bands would, ar like, would argue and say, oh, no, we're dangerous. You know, like say the corns of the limp biscuits of the world. But what what do you um, is sort of missing there in the equation of? Mm, I, I mean, there that, there is a point to that. There is some some of that in there. I, personally, I find a, a sense of um, lack of sincerity, a bit of posturing. You know, and that's what I when I bands that I find that I like, I, I inherently have a sense that they mean it, and that matters to me. I don't if I think somebody's just. Um, following the trend because that's what you do today. I, I, you do know. you think it's like the industry that kind of uh, makes, or that artists choose to, to sort of buff the ed edges because they think they're going to sell more, or? I think it comes down to an artist's decision, which is, independent, which is specific to each artist, of why they're doing it. And if they're doing it to, um, I mean, I can sound, I'm trying to put my, um, you don't want to vulgarity sound... censorship uh, ship in right okay. now. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can sound full of myself, but I can tell you that um, I'm glad to make money doing this. But mm -hmm. I'm doing it because I love music, and this is what I would do anyway. And, and if I had to work at McDonald's to make music at night, that's what I would do. But I think a lot of people now are doing music just to make money and trying to um, hoodwink people into believing that there's some sincerity there. That's just my opinion on it. Yeah. But I, I think when you're in a climate where you're, you're much more um, congratulated on your business sense than you are your talent, that something's not quite right with the scene right now. Well, That's you're seeing it in a lot, a lot of different arts, too, where it's like really broad caricatures of very, very generalized things, a sort of pablumized, homogenized type of art. And I'm, I, I wonder sometimes, is that what people want, or is that what they're merely given? Well, I think to a degree people will absorb what they're spoon-fed, you know, and if you look at playlists and radios and videos now, it's, it's apparent that people are buying what they're told to buy. But um, I do think there's a contingent of people out there that demand more from their art and, and want to get a, a greater meaning or depth or want to read lyrics and think about it or wonder what thought went into it and then not treat music as just disposable crap that you buy on a little plastic thing and throw out when you're sick of it, you know. Yeah. Um, we have fr a question from Fred. Hey, Fred. Hi, Trent. I was wondering what your relationship with uh, Marilyn Manson is right now. A good question. <laughs> Somebody has to say it. Um, I mean, we went through a, a, quite a long period of not caring much for each other. Um, we'll see. Next week should yield some interesting results, perhaps. I'll just leave it at that. I had heard that you guys were sort of making amends. I, it's, it's... You never know. Yeah. Watch and see. Uh... Um, uh, what is it about, you were talking about um, that what inspires you is a lot of hip-hop and rap. You have Dr. Dre on the album. What is it about hip-hop and rap that you're loving these days? Um, I think that uh, since it is a uh, relatively new genre of music, I, I think that more interesting experimental things are coming out of that. That and like real underground dance stuff, you know, in the Aphex Twin world and the Autechers of the world, Square Pushers, I think that's the most exciting new music I've heard, or new things come out of that. Um, 
I, uh, as opposed to what you find in the rock world, where it seems to be treading the same sea of the same stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I spent a lot of time listening to hip hop and rap and just rhythmically and, um, as far as synthesis is of different genres of music, I think there's a lot of interesting stuff going on there. For me, more exciting than... Yeah, the, um, yeah the creators are giving themselves freedom to create as well. It seems more... Um, less rules involved. And every once in a while, someone will stumble into something great and then a million people rip it off. But I'm seeing more of those stumbles happen in that world to me than I am in uh, rock and roll. Um, at the end of the downward spiral, you're saying that it sort of you came to a place where it was like, oh, my. it was kind of, sounds kind of pretty horrific in terms of the personal impact it had on your life. Where do you find you are now in terms of putting this album out, you're on the road? You seem to me like you're in a pretty good space. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's, um, being on the road is strange because it's not like real life. And I'm not sure what real life is, if it's what I think it was or what it is now. And, and uh, it's weird. It's weird being um, around people and treated differently, and there's lots of strange things. And um, Downward Spiral, when we started that tour, we were kind of a medium, small band. When we ended it, we were a pretty big band. And we never really had time to sit down and really assess when the change happened or how it happened. Or how you felt about it. Either. Yeah, and you realize the person that got off the tour bus a couple years later wasn't the same person that got on it, and not necessarily for the better. And on this record, I think there's a different sense of maturity, maybe. Um, and I'm, I'm out with a mission this time, and it's to show people this is a cool record. Cool. And I'm energized and ready to do that. Ask me this a few months from now, and it may be a different story here. But, you know. um, you're going to be playing uh, at, in Toronto tonight, and then tomorrow in um, Montreal, and doing June 2nd in Vancouver. And do you mind if we just go out to the window and... To make this more this, this social meeting a bit a bit more easy, um, this fellow here has a question. Okay. Okay, yeah, I was, I was wondering um, how that uh, Dr. Dre remixing uh, even deeper, how that came to be, and how you feel about that. Uh, um, how did you find Dr. Dre? Uh, Dre and I have been friends for um, several years, and just kind of always were intrigued by how each other worked on stuff. <laughs> Uh, it was a track that we were both in the same city at the same time and just got to hang out with him in the studio and see how he worked and it was, it was a cool thing. We may do something in the future together. That's pretty funny, eh? This crystallizes your point about being totally watched and looked at and while you're trying to have a conversation, somebody's saying, oh my god, he looked at me. Pretty crazy thing. Well, here you are and once again, take on North America. And, um, all right, thank you, thank you everybody for coming.